Welcome back to Our Walk in Christ. Well, today we're going to talk about the cup. Eventifa is not yet full. We're going to go ahead and get diving right on here, starting with just kind of the articles. Uh, a friend of mine alerted me to this. Um, I missed it in the news. And um, I kind of pulled up several different uh, takes from the whole thing. So in Yahoo, of course, the most secular news, Proud Boys and Antifa exchange paintball, gunfire, and pepper spray at a rally by a controversial pastor downtown Portland. Well, to read that article, you go, oh, I'm Proud Boys and Antifa fighting again. What's going on? Well, what this article left out of the title, it did have down here, is that what happened is a church had organized an outdoor family prayer event and Antifa shows up and starts throwing flashbang grenades and pepper spray into crowds of children and families in a church screaming, where is your God now? I got news for you guys, Antifa, if you're watching. When you start doing that to God, God is not mocked. As a man sows, so shall he reap. And we are going to get into that. Now, there are a lot of videos you can find. Um, the We're, we're just going to have a look at just a few of these. We're not going to watch. Like, there's the whole 12 minute of most of the whole thing. Um, I don't think I've that pulled up, and that is uh, age gated on YouTube. So uh, you can watch it. It is embedded in some of these. But here's some, uh, some of the uh, things going on. Don't worry. These guys are the worshipers. And then you can see down here is your Antifa guys all in black. And they're coming over, kind of destroying stuff. Turn down a little bit there. So you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, zoom ahead a little bit. Here's, here's them. Now, by the way, um, the police apparently were watching all this go down and were not intervening. And I would say that according to the scriptures, they are going to have a greater judgment. Uh, they are the ones that actually hold the power of the sword. And um, they don't seem to be caring. Um, here's Proud Boys with Weapons in downtown Waterfront Park today. I'm um, not sure if this is the same event or not. Um, here's Behind Enemy Lies News. Confirming Behind Enemy Lines was responsible for organizing an armed group in attendance at Arthur Pulowski's event today in Portland. That is, if you are unfamiliar with uh, that man, that is the one who uh, kicked the police out of his church up in Canada. He is speaking down at this church event. And uh, you can see they are using Twitter. In fact, here is a self-professed Antifa member thanking this organization for organizing this protest where flashbang grenades were thrown at children. And this is still up on Twitter. So, I mean, I'm telling you guys, this is the type of stuff that um, the double standard is here. I can't talk about the pros or cons um, of taking a Fauci ouchie, but these guys can actually organize and uh, put together weapons and whatever else. Now, CBN News, ruthless Antifa attack Christians, children at prayer event in Portland. Once again, the police were watching. They were not doing anything. They were just standing there. I think that the police have the biggest culpability because they are the ones that have the ability to actually step up and do something. And here is Antifa pepper spraying a, a churchgoer. And uh, to watch some of the videos, you can see that they were being very, the church members were being very gracious. They, in general, were not fighting back. Let's see what this one is here. What is that? What is that? He has, he has... So these are from Andy No, who is apparently the only reporter that reports on the idea called Antifa. He says, peace to you in the name of Jesus. And now this guy's coming over here like a demon-possessed lunatic. 
Um, yeah, there you go. Okay, you, you know what will we'll solve this, by the way? If one guy with a carry conceal permit is allowed to defend himself, take one shot at one guy throwing a flashbang grenade, and all these guys run off like the scared little wussies that they actually are. You can see this guy. All you need to do is mention the name of Jesus, and now this guy's getting all in their face. That's what demon-possessed people do, guys. Just an FYI. Um, here is... Um, a lady describing what's Can you going on. What happened? Um, so we were about to have a worship event, and uh, Antifa just rolled in like an angry mob, started throwing flash bombs at everybody, macing everybody, rotten eggs at everybody, um, black paint. Um, they threw a flash bomb into a group of kids that were out there um, from like four months old to like ten. Um, yeah, they were ruthless. Unbelievable. Yep. So, so there you go. That's the idea. Of course, the Democratic Party's like it's just an idea. Yeah, the idea is uh, is apparently armed. Here is from the Christian Post. Here's some good uh, groups. So they showed up. That the umbrellas, of course, are to defend against people uh, lobbing anything back. They got riot shields, gas masks in some cases because they know they're out here to throw masks. If you jump onto this one here, um, the article will be in the in the video description. It is age gated. So got to sign in on a YouTube account where you can do that. And of course, uh, here is uh, a terrorist group Antifa attacks prayer event with young children present. Quick facts, Antifa used Twitter to organize and celebrate an attack. Again, this is an Antifa member thanking behind uh, Enema Lines uh, Lies News, whatever, for organizing the event. Um, so you can see that they're actually Twitter is complicit in att attacking children. Uh, police did not provide any help to attendees or arrest any of the attackers. Apparently, they were just watching. Number of shootings and homicides in Portland has increased exponentially over the past year as politicians have defunded and vilified the police. And as a radical leftist organization, Antifa is fully protected by local and national politicians, the local justice system, the media, big tech, despite carrying out vicious attacks on the police, civilians, small businesses, and other ideological opponents. Again, this is how the secular news posts it. They don't even mention anything. Thing about um, about a church service, a family event. It's just oh, a controversial pastor. That's all they have to say. And so, as we are looking at this type of stuff, we actually want to concern ourselves with what the scriptures might actually say, because while this happens uh, in somewhere in one of those videos that we didn't play, an Antifa member can be heard shouting, "Where's your God now?" Well, guys, we're going to see exactly where God is. In fact, as I was doing my reading this morning, um, I came to this section here from 2 Kings 18. I think I actually technically read the part in Isaiah, but uh, this is cross-referenced. Uh, no, so to give you up to bring up to speed, uh, Rabshaka is the servant of the king of Assyria. I think I think this would have been Sargon, but I could be wrong about which exactly which king of Assyria it is. And he is there to he he is sent to go and uh, convince the people in um, in Jerusalem to surrender to him so that they can go ahead and um, you know just take over the city. And then the people are saying to him, oh, you know, please talk to us in our language that we can understand rather than uh, rather than um, the language that, that they will understand. He says, no, no, no. My message is for everybody on the wall. And this is what part of this transaction sounds like. Uh, Rabbi Shaka stood and cried with a loud voice in Judean, saying, hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says to the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you from my hand, nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying the Lord will surely deliver us, and this city will not be given in the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me and eat of his vine and each one of his fig trees and drink the each waters of his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive trees and honey, that you may live and not die. But do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. And Hezekiah takes this and 
praise up to God, and we have our answer. When King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and entered the house of the Lord. Then he sent Elikim, to, uh, who was over the household with Shebna, to the, uh, the scribe, to the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. <laughs> this guy's got, got Isaiah on, on speed dial. They said to him, thus says Hezekiah, this is the day of distresses, rebuke and rejection for children have come to birth and there is no strength to deliver. Perhaps the Lord your God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to reproach the living God. And so will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, offer a prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servant of the king of Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus says the Lord. Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he will hear a rumor and return to his own land and I will make him fall by the sword in his own land. I want you to know that the king of Assyria has received the most possible grace that could possibly be given in this case. This is the most gracious thing is for God to do an immediate rebuke. Is that what God's going to do to Antifa? Probably not. Why is he probably not going to do that to Antifa? Well, the reason is because we are in the New Testament era. In the New Testament era, something different tends to happen. God will hand them over to their sin. And in Romans chapter 1, verses 28 to 32, we read this. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all the unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murderers, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, and although they know the the ordinances of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death. They not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. God gives them over to their sin. He has given over this whole city of Portland into their own sin as they defund the police, the one arm that is capable of holding order. They've given it all over to whatever they want to do. They have bowed over to uh, communism and to socialism, all this nonsense, God is going to hand them over. But be sure, he is going to return and he is going to destroy them. The martyrs who call out to God in the throne room, Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony with which they maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each one of them a white robe, and they were told that they should rest for a little while longer, until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, even as they had been, would be completed also. You see, there's going to be a lot more people martyred. A whole lot more of us have to go to our death because of our testimony of Christ. Are you ready? Are you ready? But we have to understand, why is God doing this? Well, the hint of why God does this, the hint of why God is so long-suffering is actually found back in Genesis chapter 15. In Genesis 15, verses 13 through 16, God said to Abraham, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, where they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years but I will judge the nation whom they will serve. And afterwards, they will come out with many possessions. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You will be buried at a good ripe age. And then in the fourth generation, they will return here. For the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. Keeping this verse on the screen for a little bit, I'm going to break down a few things. This is Abram. Before, of course, even his name was changed to Abraham, before his son Isaac was born of his wife Sarah, 
Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. This is referring specifically to the 12 tribes of Israel in Egypt. Okay, in Egypt. They will be enslaved and impressed 400 years. Look at the generations in Egypt. That's how long they were there. Afterwards... They will come out of Egypt with many possessions. If you're not familiar or up on your story of Exodus, they plundered Egypt as they left. As Egypt told them, get out of our lands, they plundered Egypt and they left Egypt with many possessions. Abraham goes to his father's grave in peace. He will be buried at a good old age and he was past 100. In the fourth generation, they will return here. Why in the fourth generation? Because the iniquity of the people currently living in this place is not yet complete. In other words, when all these people like that God of that Old Testament, the God of the Old Testament, he was just, he was so mean to kill all those innocent people. I want you to know, these Amorites, the Canaanites, they were sacrificing their children to Moloch. They were taking perfectly healthy babies and throwing them into a pit of fire to the false god Moloch. Are we doing anything different as we cast babies by the millions, put them to death at the hands of abortion clinics, calling this woman's right to choose? No. The baby never had a choice. You want to choose not to have a baby? Stop having sex. Be committed in your relationships. Stop seeing children as inconveniences. These people were so wicked, they were killing innocent people. Their sin, their iniquity, their cup of it was not yet full. And I got news for you. Antifa's cup of iniquity is not yet full. It is not yet full. These people are roaming around. These are people who are flashbanging children while the police watch. The police aren't innocent in this either. In fact, the police have a higher culpability. It is their job to keep order. And when a group of masked and armed people start attacking people gathering together, to practice their religion as the Constitution allows it is the police's job to get in there and intercede. But they didn't. But the cup of the iniquity of the Amorites was not yet complete. And the cup of the iniquity of Antifa is not yet complete. Let these people continue to disrupt the church. Let them continue to disrupt God and the Christians. While we may seek the police, remember that in most places Antifa is active, the police have been completely neutered. Recently, uh, in the last couple days, I believe, uh, two police officers were killed in the line of duty in Chicago, and in comes the mayor, who has defunded and yelled about the racism of police for the last year and a half. They're, oh, we're going to come to the solidarity, and in lockstep, the police turn their back on Mayor Beetlejuice. They didn't want anything to do with that creature because she has been doing nothing but bad-mouthing them for 18 months. In the places these people are active, the police have been neutered. They can't even do their job. In fact, it's so bad, I'm not sure if it's Portland. I think it's Seattle. It's one of those two. I think it's Seattle, though. A federal judge ordered the city that you have got to increase your number of police because you cannot do your constitutionally mandated job. Maybe some more churches need to start suing in those. That is something we can do. What we cannot do is take vengeance onto ourselves. We can't bust out an all-out war. We can't go to war with them. And that's honestly why the Proud Boys were there, too. They were there providing voluntary security. It's what some of the Christian articles didn't bring in as much. But the police were neutered. The city councils will be held to a higher account for God, as will the thugs who do these works. But as for us Christians, we turn the other cheek. Never take vengeance, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Who is going to fulfill that cup of iniquity of Antifa? Is it going to be you or is it going to be God? It is going to be God. 
So do not be misled. Number one, things will get worse, especially for Christians. These people running around telling us, oh, you Christians, become a Christian and everything will go well for you. Nope. Do not think this means that God does not love us. This is a danger of preaching that gospel. We have to preach instead that God says we will be persecuted for preaching the truth, illuminating light into a dark world. He is keeping an accounting of his vengeance. He is doing it. Ultimately, we are victorious because we are in Christ. That is what we are. We are victorious because we are in Christ. Don't sit back and try and fight on their ends. Think about this. That Antifa member is shouting, where's your God now? There he is. You might think about messing with that little cub, but if you don't see that big bear in the background looming deep, oh, oh, things are going bad for you, my friend. That is Antifa. They are mocking God. God will come out and seek vengeance for himself. Do not mock God as a man sows, so shall he reap. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can head on over to the website, rwalkingchrist.com. We have our podcasts and we have our newsletter. There are several books as well. We talked today about Hezekiah a little bit. We talked, looked at the verse of that prayer. I have a whole book on the prayers of Hezekiah. He had two major prayers can head on over here and uh, grab a copy of the book. You can grab it directly from us or, you know, anywhere else you can find the books here. There's um, e-books, audio books, um, and several different links listed there on the website at rwalkingchrist.com. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope that you enjoy your daily walk in our Lord.